Hi everyone! On today's video, I'm going to talk about my oldest IBM PC, the PS2 Model 25. I bought mine on eBay for $150 from a local seller who found it at an estate sale. She overheard another person say that they wanted to buy it and part it out, and decided that she wanted to find it a good home instead. After she won the PS2, she spoke to the sales organizers and discovered that it belonged to a service member who didn't return from war, and that it had been locked away in his childhood bedroom since his passing. The IBM PS2 Model 25 was a budget model PS2 system from 1987. It's an all-in-one system with a 10-inch display. The Model 25-001 has a grayscale display, and the Model 25-004, which I have here, is color. It supports MCGA, which is compatible with most basic VGA modes, including 320 by 200 at 256 colors and 640 by 480 in monochrome, as well as all CGA video modes. Both original versions of the Model 25 sport an 8086 CPU and either 512K or 640K of RAM. From the factory, mine came with a 720K floppy drive and a 20 megabyte hard drive. Sadly, this hard drive uses a proprietary connector, which carries data, control, and power over a single ribbon cable from the motherboard. This severely limits repair options, since the hard drive can't be replaced with a normal SD, MFM, or IDE hard disk, and even if you install a new hard disk controller, you'll have to modify the motherboard or power supply, which is in the CRT section of the body, to power the hard disk. Since my system came with a failed hard disk, I needed to find an alternative for storage. In the past, I've used zip disks as boot devices for my Mac Plus, so I wondered if it was possible to do something similar with the Model 25. The official iOmega drivers require at least a 286 processor, but thankfully, someone named Klaus Peichel has written a driver called PalmZip, which works on 8086 CPUs. This was mostly targeted at early ultra-portable systems, but works like a charm on the Model 25. There's more information on how to get this driver in the description if you're interested. To make it work, all I had to do was add the driver to my config.sys and autoexec.bat on a boot floppy, which has a very basic install of DOS 5 on it. Once the system loads the driver, it transfers control of the system to the full DOS install on the zip disk. Access speeds aren't the greatest on this system, but it's allowed me to experiment and has honestly been a great option for an infrequently used machine. I've been able to run games, Windows 3.0, and many DOS productivity tools off of the zip disk. If you're interested in upgrading the Model 25, you have to choose carefully, as there are only two 8-bit ISA slots available. To access them, you can open the system by removing two flathead screws at the back of the case. Then, you can carefully pull the system board section of the case out, which takes a bit of finesse on my system. Once the case is freed, the system board folds down and the cables are managed such that there is plenty of room to open the case. It's a welcome change from what we're used to with modern systems. We now have plenty of room to add the expansion cards. The first expansion card I've installed is an OPL3 sound card, which is very similar to the Radlib sold by Texelac. This card was a little bit cheaper than the Radlib and sounds absolutely great on AdLib supported software. With the sound card installed, this is a great machine for early DOS games. The other upgrade I've installed is an XTCF Lite Rev4, which I purchased on eBay from Bulgaria. Sometimes these cards are available from Texelac but they had sold out when I wanted to purchase mine. This card provides a standard CF card slot and includes a BIOS which allows the machine to boot directly from the card. Most importantly for this machine, the XT CF Lite pulls power for the CF card directly from the ISA slot, so it doesn't require any modifications to the PS2 motherboard or power supply. Also, since it's using flash storage and the ISA interface rather than the parallel port of the computer, Transfer speeds are noticeably faster than the zip disk I began with. When reassembling the system, it is important to make sure that the tabs on either side of the system are slotted properly into the pegs which catch them, 
and you should be careful not to catch the ribbon cables for the floppy and hard disks when closing the case. On my system, it also takes some finesse to tuck the motherboard tray underneath the plastic case. Careful, gentle force can get this back in place with some practice. In the future, I am considering purchasing a no-slot clock for this machine, since it is my primary text editing machine and modification dates would be nice to have. This is a small board that goes in between your ROM chips and the motherboard and provides a battery-backed real-time clock. With these upgrades installed, let's take a look at some games on the Model 25. While this machine was certainly not designed to be a speed demon, it's capable enough to run some early DOS games. First up is Prince of Persia, which has a wonderful soundtrack being played by the OPL3 sound card. I haven't figured out how to get very far into this game, as the controls are very different from what we have today, but the music is wonderful and the graphics look great on the MCGA display. Next we have The Secret of Monkey Island, which was designed for EGA displays. There is also a VGA version, but I haven't been able to find a copy of it. This game looks pretty good on the Model 25, but I've had some difficulties with my mouse in this game, so I haven't gotten very far. Another game I'm excited to play on the Model 25 is Lara Bo, The Dagger of Amun-Ra. This is an old Sierra game which sounds like it will be right up my alley. Since the introduction sequence is 30 minutes long, at least when you play it on an 8086, I haven't gotten very far into this game either, but it seems to make good use of the MCGA graphics and the sound card. I'm also interested in playing the King's Quest series on the Model 25. Some of the later games were likely meant for a more powerful PC, but King's Quest V seems to run well enough and takes good advantage of the MCGA graphics and sound card. Finally, the first game I purchased when I knew I was going to be getting the Model 25, Planet X3 by the 8-Bit Guy. This game runs incredibly on the Model 25, since it was designed to run on the original IBM PC. The 8-bit guy supports many graphics systems, but thankfully one of them is MCGA graphics mode. This game looks absolutely incredible on the Model 25 display. In addition to the incredible work which was done in creating a PC speaker soundtrack for the game, AdLib support is also available which makes this, in my opinion, the best showcase of what this machine can do. In addition to being a fun gaming machine, this is a great distraction-free writing machine. After a fair bit of testing, I've settled on Microsoft Works 3 for DOS as my word processor of choice, as it is very fast to load and doesn't lag a lot when editing your text. By contrast, Microsoft Write for Windows takes much longer to load and is much more difficult to use, as the display gets very soft in 640x480 graphics mode. The first draft of this video was actually written on this machine, and I expect to write many of my scripts here since it has a great Model M keyboard and it's very hard to get distracted on a single tasking operating system. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it, in which case please let YouTube know. If not, or if you have anything you want to say about the Model 25, let me know in the comments. Also, consider subscribing, as I intend to post more videos about similar subjects in the future. See y'all next time!